Hello, everybody. Welcome to AES 2011. How's everybody doing? Let's make just a little bit of noise. Just a little bit of noise. There we go, there we go. It's new. It's new, yeah, exactly. My name is Brian Carter. This is Bill Gowing. And uh, i got to tell you, we're really, really excited this year uh, at the AES show because we have we have stuff that we can uh, announce and, uh, and finally talk about now that, uh, that really is exciting for us, especially as HD users as well. But let's just take a quick little journey and kind of see how we got here. In fact, it was this time last year that Adam was on the AES floor making some really major announcements. I mean, we did a lot of things last year. Hardware, software, new functionality, a lot of things going on. But let's break that down a little bit more. Specifically, we introduced a new version of Pro Tools last year, Pro Tools 9, that really opened up, right? So there were a lot of other options for users now with, with Pro Tools 9 software. We also did a complete refresh of all of our inbox interfaces, and they sound stellar right now. Also, a complete refresh of our HD series interfaces from top to bottom that are getting rave reviews. We also introduced a brand new card, the HD Native card, and of course, Pro Tools HD9, which supports all of our, hard, our HD hardware. But all along, there was, there's always been a system and always been a set of cards, like you see over there, that have always been our flagship, the Pro Tools HD, in this case, HD Excel cards. They've been the industry standard now for what, eight years now? Actually, in January, it's been years. Ten years. That's a long time. That's uh, my goodness. That's a very long time. So why have they been the industry standard for so long? You know, this is questions we always ask our customers. We ask our dealers. This is the kind of feedback that typically we get. Dedicated DSP. Customers love it. They love the reliability of it. They love the lowest possible latency. They don't even want to think about latency. That's a term they don't even like to talk about. That's what HD is always providing. Dedicated track count, expansion. Bottom line is all about reliability, right? And that's what the, that's what the professional customers have always loved. So, over the last couple of years, Abbott has been talking to our customers and really listening and asking the question, what would a next generation system, what would it need to be to outdo what is already the industry standard, right? Well, overwhelmingly the customers are saying basically the same thing. They want more plug-in power. They want more tracks. Wow. We have 192, that's not enough. They want more. More mixing power. They even want more flexibility, right? I mean, everybody, well, me too. I want more too. We all want more. But, uh, it's going to be pretty tough to, to outdo a system that's already the industry standard, right? But we have that system now. It's called, I love that slide, by the way. I'm going to do it again just because I can. We have that system now. It's the Pro Tools <laughs> HDX system. Literally, in every way, in all of the things that the customers were asking for, not only did we provide that, but we exceeded it in every way. So here it is, Pro Tools HDX. Beautiful looking cards. In fact, Gil, because I can, I'm going to do this. Just so you guys see it, boom, that's what it looks like. Boom. Beautiful looking card. This is the next generation, right, Gil? That's right. So let's talk about those uh, improvements. So the first thing, more power, more DSP power. Now, this slide says four times. That's actually, we were pretty conservative with that anyway, but over the last several weeks, they just they keep on turning things out, working on stuff. We're seeing five, seven, ten times wow. the power per card over HD Excel. That's amazing. Yep. Four times the track count now. So we had on HD Excel, we had 192 tracks. You can get out of that. On an HDX system with three cards, you can get 768 dedicated to get track and play that. Amazing amount of track count. For all your background vocals. Four right. times the delay compensation. So with Pro Tools 9, we actually uh, introduced the delay compensation across the board. But there's a lot of plugins out there that have some processing that needs some delay there. And when you start chaining these high-end plugins together, you're uh, you know, there was a case that you could exceed that 4,000 sample delay. Now, 16,000 sample delay, this isn't just for HDX, this is actually for all uh, of, uh, not only the HDX, but for all native or Pro Tools 10 users as well. That's really, really cool. Yep. And then, over four times the headroom. HDXL had 300 dB of headroom in its mixer. With this new system with 32 bit float, we're talking 50, to over 1,500 dB of headroom now. Oh, that's over 1,000 more dB than the, the HD itself. True hybrid system. So not only are you getting this great part, but it was designed from the ground up to interact with the host. So you get truly the best of both worlds. 
That's what HBX is all about. Absolutely. So we're introducing new hardware, yes. And as Gil said, we're also introducing new software, Pro Tools 10 software. And again, listening to the customer. The software provides a lot of the features that, quite honestly, a lot of our customers have been asking for for five, ten years, right? Especially on the post side. But what we're going to do in our presentation is show you how those many of these features are not just post features. These are just features that can help no matter what workflow you're, you're doing. Cliffhanger, real-time fades, a lot of audio suite enhancements, and something that we're also really excited about, an extended dispatch. We'll go over what those mean in a moment. So, before we go there, let's just talk just for a moment about, uh, oh, I love this slide, but I'm going to go past it. Bam. Let's talk a little bit about what we're going to be using for our, our demonstration. Um, first of all, we're lucky enough to have some material from Alicia Keys, who's also an, an industry standard, right? And these are just some shots of her beautiful studio here in New York City, Jungle City Studios. Alicia is a, is a huge avid uh, user, a Pro Tools user. She's got multiple Pro Tools HD systems. She's got the Icon in one room. She's got the, uh, the S5 Fusion in the other room. So she's totally into the whole um, Pro Tools world, right? So what we're going to do is uh, use one of her tracks and kind of do a little bit of creative music production using a lot of the new features that are Pro Tools 10, but more importantly, using the power of HDX. Let's take a listen to the, uh, the track that we're working yeah, on. Yeah, so here's the original track before we actually start breaking it back down. So take a quick listen to this. Oh, I love that sub. Do it, Alicia. some other things just to kind of, I don't know, I'm not going to say enhance what she says. It's already been as good as it can ever be. But we tried some other things. So let's do this, Gil, just to kind of talk about some of the 10 features. Let's go ahead and solo up her vocals since we can. And uh, let's just take a listen to, uh, to what she sounds like. Okay? Now we've got all the processing off. It's just raw right now. There we go. I love this part. Okay. Let's do it, baby. Let's do it, do it. Even if you were a million miles away, I could still feel you in my bed. Near me, touch me, feel me. Uh, that already sounds amazing, right? Great recording, beautiful voice. What a way to start. Wouldn't it be nice to start? That's what you're getting ready to mix. So what we want to do is just talk a little bit about some of the new features. Typically, when you're getting ready to do any project, right, you have to go through and maybe do a little bit of vocal leveling, getting things even, which would mean probably automation, right? And everybody hates doing automation early in the project. Now you've got faders you're battling with. This is where clip gain can really help. Right, Gil? Absolutely. So if we look down here in the bottom corner of these clips, which actually a little new terminology with uh, Purple's 10, uh, it's more industry-wide to call these clips than region. So uh, when, when we say clips, I think of region. That's what we're talking about. So these clips down the bottom left corner, you see this little uh, gain readout. This is basically telling you uh, how much gain, clip gain, this, this uh, particular clip has. So pick up a little fader and actually adjust that. You can actually see in real time the, 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 the actual waveform. So you can quickly kind of even just visually kind of balance things out a little bit and uh, be able to make those changes. And I can just get some real quick. Real quick, go in there and uh, just kind of level this out very, very fast. Uh, we can even look at those things on uh, with uh, the line. It's basically a graphic representation of what that is. And uh, we can even use some uh, things like uh, key commands to make these adjustments. Or we can use even a scroll wheel. So a lot of different cool ways that we can get in and go through and uh, make these adjustments on putting names to this vocal and really uh, get it to kind of sit exactly where it needs to be. Absolutely. So I love what you've done now. Um, I'll tell you what, I was just going to mention also with the clip game. Somebody asked me that last demonstration. 
Uh, they didn't want to have to use the mouse. You don't have to. You can just keep them so You can simply keep your hands if you're editing and be able to adjust clipping as you go on the fly. That's right. right. So yeah, you got the you got the the up and down arrow, or you can even use uh, the scroll wheel. Yeah, it's a number of different ways. It's not just about the mouse when you just keep your hands on the keyboard. It's exactly. very easy, very, very easy to do. So let's go ahead and uh, her vocal right now is uh, that's a little naked. So let's go ahead and add a loop underneath that and see if we can kind of start. Somebody smiled on that. I saw it. I mean, there's nothing on it. Let's go ahead and add some loops, do a little bit of production, and see what we start to do to build this up, okay? okay. So I, I found a loop that I like, and I kind of added it for the intro. But, Gil, what I'm hoping we can do is, is take the loop and kind of find an interesting way to loop into the verse. Sure. So let's take a look at what you got here, right? Ah, uh, yeah. I'm, 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 I like that. Very cool, right? But if we listen to it in context... I'm still a baby, I'm still a baby, I'm still a do it, even. So we want to be able to kind of have something that we can make it interesting as we go into the actual version. Of it. Absolutely. So uh, we're going to use some, uh, some cool new things we've got going on with audio this week. So right now, if you look up on the screen, you see two plugins up there. These are actually two built-in plugins that come with every version of Pro Tools 10. One of them is a mainstay from many, many years now, Beaver. Nice facelift, still great sound, a little reverb, from the free with every version of Pro Tools. One down here below it is Mod Delay 3. This is actually the new built-in delay in the Pro Tools. New added look to the GUI, so we've got this whole new added family look for our plugins. But the interesting thing about what we're going to show you here is these two plugins are not real-time plugins that are on track. These are actually audio speed plugins. So first, in Pro Tools 10 now, you can have multiple audio suite windows open. Yep. And the cool side with this is we've got Windows configuration. We've never used it. Very, very cool feature. But you can store these numbers of audio suite plugins in the Windows configurations. And when you recall them, whatever settings that were there also get recalled. So you don't have to worry about going to your uh, preset menu and finding what you want. You can quickly dial those things in, save them to the window configurations. And Add up your template. So every time you bring those things back, you've got a great starting point. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So uh, we've got one more little thing I want to talk about. We've got this little reverse button down here in these audio suite. So every delay and reverb plugin, whether it's one of ours or even a third party now, has this reverse button. Now what this does is it normally would be a multi-step process. Well, what I mean by that is with this reverse thing, what it does is you would basically take a clip and reverse it. And then apply the effect to it. And then re-reverse it so that the, the actual effect is reversed. Very, very cool stuff. It gives you those, those reverse delay and reverb effects. But that would normally be a three-step process. So now, it's actually really simple. So I'm just going to select this clip right here. And uh, let's just do it with a delay. We'll listen to that. Let's slow that out. I like it already. So that's really cool. Yeah. Now, let's, uh, let's actually here in the middle, just to kind of give it a little bit of flair, let's add a little bit of uh, the reverb to it, right? So now if we listen across that. So too low, just go here, our click game, we'll raise that up. Nice. Now, just one quick other thing. Let's say I didn't exactly like what I what I did there. I wanted to shorten this up with uh, the reverb. We've now got handles for audience with them. Once again, the thing you've been asking for for years. Right now, we've got it set to two seconds. This is kind of a, a, a predefined thing. You put your preferences, how long you want those handles to be, or you can use the whole file. And what I mean by handles is, is when you usually do an audio suite process, the only process is what you select. Yeah. And if you needed to like actually trim things out and, and edit them around, you have, you have to basically go back and undo and bring the original back before you can do it. That's no longer the case. You can actually come over here with our layer. We can add in a little uh, crossfade here, right? And now we will listen across that. Nice. And then just another real quick thing, that, that fade. It's a real-time fade. It's no longer in Pro Tools 2. You have all those little fade files that get written to this. All of our fades now are taken care of on the fly, no more worrying about having to keep up with them because they're getting up. It's all right there, which puts down on session load time. It makes it load sessions quickly, quick. So let's, so let's just, just quickly take a listen to how that leads into the rehearsal. I'm still a baby. I'm 
pistol, baby, pistol, do it. Even if you were a man. Yep, absolutely. And what we're hearing right now, because uh, as soon as the verse starts, there's some chords that are happening. So I just wanted to, I didn't want to leave her out there by herself, so I put some piano chords in here. But for the chords, I decided to use velvet, right? This is part of our instrument expansion pack. I just happen to love the plug-in, because it really has that, it, it modeled those old vintage roads extremely well. But Gil also has on the other side of the screen something that was introduced in Proto's 8, notation, right? So again, since we're talking music production, these are kind of all the things that kind of go along so more importantly, this also allows us to talk about uh, Velvet as a VI. Yes, you can still use all of those things in Hotel 10. Nothing's changed. Let's take a listen to it with just a little bit of the roads inside of the session now. Sure. plug-in is an RTAS plug-in, but we've got some new things going on with plug-ins, right? Absolutely do. So, you know, kind of, as we move towards the future, try to get, we're basically getting ready to move into this whole 60 foot world. I mean, people, you know, need to go there, everybody's moving forward, but we, we have to take it steps. If we move to 60 foot too fast, we've got a total system that moving to 60 foot bit. A lot of those people aren't ready yet, and they didn't lose all those plug-ins. Another thing is, is trying to go forward, trying to make it easier. So right now we've got prior to Pro Tools, we had two plug-in scanners we used inside of Pro Tools, RTAS and TDA. We're introducing here with Pro Tools 10 the new AAX plug-in platform, which is added audio extension. This basically is a 64-bit ready platform that is a single plug-in algorithm that you can develop for both native-based plugins and DSP-based plugins. So this is going to make developing plugins for our, our third parties and even us a lot easier. And that's going to actually mean, as you're going to see here in a minute, there's things that only used to be available native that will actually be available to DSP and vice versa. Things that will only be available to DSP will be native now because it's a lot easier to deal with in this AX platform. Now the first plugin we want to take a look at, and this is a new plugin we have here in uh, This is the Avid channel strip. Now, a little over a year and a half ago, we acquired the products that came with the Avid family and the System 5, their flagship uh, console, digital console. Everybody that's ever used that raves and loves the processing of a channel strip. And what we've done is we've taken that exact processing and put it into a channel strip plugin in Pro Tools. Now, the great thing about this is this isn't something you have to buy extra. This isn't something that's just for HDX or HD users. This is for every version of Pro Tools 10 has this plugin in it. And it is absolutely the sweet side. So what I kind of want to do is I'm just going to solo the vocal up here again. And uh, I'm just going to put a little bit of reverb on it. I'm just going to dress it up a little bit, right? And uh, let's, just, let's just take a listen to what we can do with this plugin. Even if you were a million miles away, Playing with Alicia right now, this is a dream. 
I know she's not here, but it, it feels like she is. <clears throat> but also we'll do two things. Let's talk a little bit about what I mentioned it earlier. Last year we uh, we had a, a serious focus on sound quality. That's why we basically refreshed all the interfaces from inbox all the way to our high-end interfaces. So right now, um, I will go to one more slide if I can. Right now we're using what we call the HD Omni interface. This has certainly become one of my favorites, um, primarily because number one, it, it's like it has a monitor section. So on a small system, I still have a way to control speaker levels and all that. But also it has mic breeze right on the front. So right now we're plugged just directly in. Nothing else going on. Just plug straight inside of the uh, the Omni. No no processing at all right oh, now. Good. On the Sounds good. So you ready to record? Mm -hmm. Oh, I love it. But you know, there's one thing musicians always ask about when you get ready to track. And what's that? They want to know about latency. Oh, so, yeah. I definitely want to mention it. One of the things that people have always loved about HD systems is that they didn't have to worry about latency. So again, photos HDX is the exact same. Again, we're in that world of just play. You worry about the part, not about any necessarily, not about buffer settings, right? So right now, again, going straight in. I, I like what's going on, but just being real, it's, it's a little dry. Can you put something on? You always want one, one. All right, yes, I can put something on your base. In fact, we've got some really great plugins. Here at the show, we've got a bunch of third-party manufacturers that already are introducing some great plugins for the ADX platform. First one we're going to take a look at is from Metric Halo. The guys are actually right over here if you want to go talk to them after the demo. Yes. Cool new plugins they've got. We're just showing brand new stuff here at the show. The first one is called Character. It's basically uh, gives you some uh, transformer or tune-based harmonic distortion to really kind of spice up that. And that's, 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 you know, we've got a nice kind of start on the sound here, but we even can take that a step further. So a few weeks ago, our friends at SoftTube that are on this wall over here as well, you can see them. They introduced a new tube leveling amplifier that's Summit Audio TLA 100, and it is on the AAX platform here, running on DSP. Nice, really smooth tube-based compressor, right? Beautiful sound effect. Brian, I think he's pretty much uh, using this on everything, yeah, right? right? Right. They shouldn't have gave it to me, because I'm uh, everything. Now, the last plug you down here, plug that's been around for a long time. It's a lot of people standard go-to EQ from Sonic. This is the Oxford EQ. AX version here, running on our DSP at the show. And this final time, final it all out, right? So now what we can do is uh, we'll give you a little bit of lead in, Brian. Okay. And uh, let's record a little bass. Even if you were a million miles away, I could still feel you in my bed. Near me, touch me, feel me. And even at the bottom of the sea, I could still hear you inside my head. We got it in there. We got the verse. I like what's going on. I like the tone. Cool. Wow, look at that. So that'll be boom, boom. I love it. <laughs> so let me ask you this. Um, another thing, just real quick with the Omni before we go past it. Um, integrated stereo um, headphone cue. Again, I already talked about um, preamps and again, a full channel mixer. So this is part of the HDX system, which we'll talk about a little bit later. All right, so let's move past the What do we want to add now, Bill? All right, so let's, uh, let's actually advance our slides forward here a couple slides. Because we're a little bit behind. Well, actually, here's our third party. There they are. Them there, right? So now let's go back and revisit that loop. I mean, right now, it's, 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 it's cool, but it, it, I think it needs some things. And the one thing is, now at the basin, it's, it's got a lot of low end. We've got an 808 track. It's got its own 808. We really need to kind of clean that up, right? So uh, let's bring that up. We've got some really cool plugins, some stuff that's been available for a while, some new stuff as well. So the first thing we're going to do, built-in plugin, every version of Pro Tools, Kill EQ. Uh, you introduced this to me not too long ago. I love it. And uh, this is a really cool plugin. So let's uh, just select a little thing. Let's start with All right? Yeah, so... Yeah. Basically, it fills that low end. It doesn't do anything. It really just it's a brick wall open in the middle. 
and you use all the nice high end the way you want it, but it kills that low end. Now yeah. that the low end's gone, my, you know, like that clap is in there. Is there any way that we can really start to bring that out? Absolutely. So metric halo, another new plugin, transient control. Really kind of accentuate that clap. But okay. even to do it even further now is a plugin that's been around for a long time from our friends at Demon Once again, it's back over here on the wall. But what's really cool about this one, it's in the AX platform, it's really a take it to the next level, but the big thing that you notice here is this plugin used to be only available for DSP systems. In the new AX platform, it's also now available as native as well. That's exactly how we're running it today. We're running it on the host. And then to kind of final it all out, the wonderful Massenburg Design Works DP. This is like one of the industry standards for EQ. Just some silky smooth, a lot of really great control. Nice. Just really kind of adds that part back to that. Nice, right? Absolutely. So again, you know, just to reiterate the point, that uh, the even tie over there, you mentioned, what did you just say a minute ago about well, it? Well, it, 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 it actually works once again. It, it was only available for TDM systems up until now the AX platform. It's actually going to be available for both the, the DSP version and as well as native. So it's going to really open up and some wonderful plugins for this company to a lot of people who have never had access to them before with the new AAX format here for this case. Now, uh, Alicia in their studio, they have this console, they have, they have yep. Icon, and they also have uh, uh, System 5 in there as well, right? Right. Okay, we'll come back to that. But you know what? I guess we should finish out 32-bit. Yeah, so we, you know, we've got 32-bit in the end processing now with 64-bit mixer starting. And this is not only on, you know, we were before, our TDM systems didn't have this 32-bit float. Now we have true parity and all this headroom now to be able to work in this whole new world within the mixer and set of Pro Tools with HDX. It's absolutely incredible. One last thing you want to do though, kind of uh, uh, plugin wise before we move on, is that uh, you also put some orchestral parts in there. Right? Absolutely. Some stuff from structure. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it, but it's our virtual instrument is a sampler, right? So uh, spend a little bit of time just coming up with some sounds. Anybody that deals with sampled sounds, especially for more natural sounds, trombones, things like that, it, 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 typically they're going to require some processing to make them sound even somewhat real. So, I mean, first of all, you're going to have to EQ them in a certain way just so that they, they stand out. Um, so, uh, this is uh, from EMG Audio. They've been out a little bit. Uh, the quality and compassion showing here in the show on our AX platform. Really wonderful sounding EQ with a, a nice little uh, graphic energy to actually see uh, frequency wise what's going on with the EQ. Compressors are really, really smooth. But they're, they're VI. We need to actually go and do something a little bit more with these to, to kind of make them feel like they're on more of a real story tab. So that's exactly what we're going to do. A little bit of reverb. We're going right? to put a little bit of reverb. The uh, soft tube uh, TSAR1. Let's really drive that reverb just to see how that feels in there. I like it, but, you know, and I, and I actually love that reverb. But typically, especially with virtual instruments, for me, if I'm doing any kind of orchestral type sounds, I've always headed towards revive. Do we have that available now? We absolutely do. So we've actually, the new version of Revive here at the show, Revive 2, is using that new added look for our family of plugins. So you really kind of will know when you're looking at an added based plugin. Big thing here with Revive at the show, I mean, it's actually working on our HDX system. But once again, talking to being able to open this up in the AX platform, we actually have the ability to not just do DSP, but this also now is a native based plugin. Nice. So everybody's going to have the opportunity to go to the to use the solar plus the rebound. Let's just do with the track. Oh, that's so beautiful. Again, Revive now available because of AAX, available across the board. If you're in Pro Tools 10, no matter what hardware you're on, you have access to some of these great sounding plugins. All right, well, listen, I guess we move forward now, right? Yeah, so just real quick, we want to touch on mixing. So, yeah. we've got an entire family of Pro Mixing 
Jackson family here at Abbott. Starting down here with the Artist Series. In fact, we've got those on the back of the booth after the demo. If you want to go check these out, get your hands on them. We've got the, actually the new Abbott branded Artist Series stuff. It's really great looking. It works really great. On up through C24, Icon, 65 MC, the S5 Series, Max Air with Broadcast Console and Venue, Live Sound Console. All of that, our entire family. But what's really exciting though with Portal 10 here is Yukon Basics. So we introduced Yukon to Pro Tools back in Pro Tools 9. That's what we call that basically at this point, Yukon Phase 1. Pro Tools 10 now brings up Yukon Phase 2 and a lot of new things. Like everything that just is it's in a menu uh, on uh, Pro Tools. Basically, it's all been now Yukonized. So you actually have access to that from the soft keys of, of an artist control or MC Pro Tools to 5 MC. Uh, a lot of really cool things that only used to be available via icon like snapshots are now available not only for the high end 65 MC, but also for artist control. So you can actually do snapshots with those things. And we've designed the app set for these things so it's actually really, really easy to be able to go in and get around two button pushes a picture pretty much anywhere you want to from the top page. Once again, if you want to see this in action, go around here and check this out uh, after the demo. It's absolutely amazing. One last thing, the Avid Channel Street is what we talked about in our actually our DQ3 plugin on the TFTs on the, on the System 5, which is the 5 MC console, you will actually see the EQ version right now. So it's really, really great feedback that we're getting there as well. So uh, we're kind of, we kind of got everything done here, and uh, we really quickly want to just uh, bring in our final bus processing here. Uh, here's another one of these things. Everybody who's familiar with Crane Song, Dave Dillon, right? Phoenix, standard plugin for many, many years on the TDM platform. AX version of Phoenix, Phoenix 2, where he basically puts all five different Phoenix plugins now in one plugin, giving you some more control. But even beyond that, being able to run it not only DSP, because AES can now run this thing, so it opens up a ton of people to use this. The exact opposite, the Blue. Great plugin from Psychomic. They've been, uh, everybody raves about this bus compressor. It's a really great sounding bus compressor, but it only used to be available native on the AAX platform. Now, you get not only the native version, but you also get to use it on DSP, so it's that other opposite way. Yeah, these are the really, really great things. And then once again, we finalize it up here with Maxim. This is a plugin that's been around for a while. It's got a new look. Not only the new look, but we've actually tweaked the insides of it. And now, it's a, with this new 32-bit uh, float system, it's actually a really great sounding final so absolutely really, really cool stuff. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the disc cache now, because we, we mentioned that earlier on, Gil, and how there's been some improvements in that. A lot of people probably aren't even sure what, what's the disc cache, what does that mean anyway? Right, let's so, go cover that. Yeah, so real quickly we'll talk about that. If you look up here in our system usage window, we've got a couple new NAS gauges up here. So first off, we redid our disk scheduler. So now, even with just regular Pro Tools 10, using drives that usually weren't available before, like you know, we didn't really recommend using USB drives because the bus was kind of slow. Or network attached storage, you know, attach, attach something with, uh, with a network with cable. Those are actually now available to be used in Pro Tools, but the big things here is with complete production toolkits, Pro Tools 10, or Pro Tools 10 HD software, we've got extended disk disc cache. And what I mean by that is you basically can now wall off a section of your RAM from Pro Tools or actually even the operating system, and you load all the audio in your session into this RAM. So you have this, this wonderful ability now to be able to just move between because you're not really reading from disk anymore, you're reading from RAM. And I want to just kind of show that to you. You just see that it's our timeline is 100% cache. We've actually got 32 gigabytes in this machine. We've got 24 assigned to it. This session is not that big, so it's not using that much of it. But it's the performance that is the is the big thing. Now we're using about 114 tracks in this session as far as voices go. Um, but the ability to just kind of hop around this, we're going to turn this down for a second and just to show you how fast and easy this is. So as we uh, touch me, turn this down. So we'll, I'm just going to keep playing. I'm just going to jump around the timeline. Not even close. Yeah. And it's in the disc cache. It's we're totally new world now. And it opens 
brings up other things to have. If you're auditioning loops, they start instantly. If you're dealing with the workspace and auditioning loops, they're immediately in time. No more waiting around. It's as fast as you can pretty much come up with whatever you're trying to do. So it's a huge, huge improvement. So now at the end, we're going to start being able to, to do some different things. So if you look up here, we've got all these individual instrument stems in production world now, you want to be able to deliver stuff from a live person, right? Yep. Now, let's, let's look at something here real quick. Let's just kind of zero in here on our system, using our system setup window. New bit depth format, 32-bit float. So now when you're working in, uh, in this, a, a session like this, you have the ability to really go in here and, and have an NDN 32-bit workflow where it never has to go in and out. But the, the big thing here is you can actually decide, okay, well, you know, somebody might not need 32-bit. Especially for live sound. These exactly. delivery stems, I might want to do 16-bit. Well, now you can actually have mixed file formats. So we can actually, on the fly, switch to 16-bit, enable those record tracks and those stem tracks, and record 16-bit files. Now, not only that, but Pro Tools 10 also now has the ability to have interleave files. So no more you have to do a multi-mono export and then join them together to give somebody a stereo file. Yes, I know, it's 2011. And we caught up with the future, the beautiful thing. And you know, once again, these are just really, really cool features. Absolutely. And then as far as collaboration goes, now you have the ability to take your, your bounces right into iTunes or even deliver to a sound cloud account. So these are some really, just really great features that are all, once again, part of Pro Tools 10 and what it actually brings to the table. So let's, let's, let's just kind of wrap it up. What are we talking about? Right? Yep, absolutely. We're talking about software, right? A lot of new features that, again, have been requested by the customers. Quick game, extended dispatch, which is huge when you get a chance to work with that. All your suite enhancements, a new plug-in format, and, of course, for Yukon, uh, a lot of new control enhancements. This is all major stuff. And then, of course, on the HDX side... Yeah, don't forget about that. We've got all the new things. Actually, this, this slide needs to change. This is, you know, five good times the power. Scalable voices. Expandable I.O. That's what we didn't talk about. Each card now can handle 64 channels of I.O. You know, three cards. You can get 192 channels of I.O. in three cards. That's unheard of. Unheard of. Uh, being able to have the new AX plug-in architecture, so it's a unified plug-in for both PSP and O's, giving you the ability to keep that end-to-end 32-bit -end floating point processing. It's just an amazing, complete system. And that's, that's just... You can't say anymore. I mean, yep. Pro Tools HDX is definitely the new standard. Absolutely. So uh, you wanted to talk about uh, exchange. That's or, right. So, so some things, I mean, questions come up. When will Pro Tools 10 be available, right? Well, actually, Pro Tools 10 software upgrades are available right now. You can go buy them today. Go on our website, you'll see the dealer, order it up, ready to go. It's a very, very cool thing. We actually released it this morning. Um, what about you, HD, HD users? We actually are offering an upgrade pack. If you've got an HD Excel system, go talk to your reseller. They can tell you about our great uh, upgrade plans. We're not shipping the cards yet. They're going to ship here in just the next little bit. But go ahead and put your order in because we'll go ahead and get you your HD 10 software upgrade. It's part of that upgrade package. When you buy your, your hardware upgrade, you get the software now so you can actually use it with your software. And then when the cards come, you just swap those cards out and it's a nice, clean, smooth into the whole new world of HDX. Absolutely. So listen, we're, we're just extremely excited about the new HDX hardware. It's a long time in the making. We've been waiting a long time to talk about this and show it and feel it and actually deal with the power of it. And as well as Pro Tools 10. I know you guys can ask some other questions. We've got a ton of booths set up. And also, before you leave, make sure you go to the link counters. They'll, they'll scan your bag and have a little send you the info. You get it in email instead of having to carry it around with you don't want. More importantly, if you go to inside of the booth, we have all of the hardware set up. You want to see HDX? Set up back here. If you want to see uh, the HD native system, set up back there with Pro Tools 10.